the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. So you guys are a bit quiet. Hallelujah. Yes. Have you guys eaten? So today, um, we thank the worship team for glorifying the Lord with the praise. And we have this praise team who practice, you know, not not seen, and they devote their time for us, and I uh, hope that they receive great blessing. And today, the message is entitled, What Are You Planting? From today's text, Abraham made a covenant with Abimelech at uh, Beersheba, a uh, neutralization pact. And afterwards, he called upon the name of the Lord who is everlasting. As you may know, the chapter 21 of Genesis is about um, Isaac's birth and also his growing, um, his um, aging of Isaac. And God promised that he will have the promised son Isaac. And we know this covenant of torch, which is the most important covenant. And through this covenant of torch, he said that Abraham's descendants will be as many as the stars in the sky. This covenant of torch largely has two main points. One of them is about the descendants of Abraham, that he will have many descendants. And second is about the land. So the covenant is about his descendants and the land. And he gave this promise to Abraham. So Abraham is old, and he didn't have a son. And to this Abraham, God promised that his descendants will be as many as the start in the sky and the sand on the beach. And this promised land, he promised this promised land to Abraham so that it's not just Abraham, but to also to his descendants forever and ever. So at this time, Abraham believed this promise. Although he was old and you know he was like a grandpa and he couldn't have a child, but he believed this promise that God gave him. Especially looking at today's text, Abraham had an act that shows that he's fully trusting in this covenant of torch. Beersheba that is in today's text today, we have heard about this a lot. And it is a place that is about 50 miles south of Jerusalem. So typically, whenever we refer to the land of Canaan, we refer to it as from Dan to Beersheba, which Dan is the northernmost and Beersheba is the southernmost. And they refer to the entirety of Canaan as from Dan to Beersheba. So Beersheba is the southernmost border of Canaan. And the word Beersheba means seven wells and also well of promise. So today, looking at the event that was at the Beersheba, we want to look at the acts of faith of Abraham. First, uh, the large number one, Abraham made a covenant with Abimelech at Beersheba. In today's text, it writes about when Abraham and Abimelech made an oath. In Genesis 21-22, Abimelech visited with his commander, Phicol, to uh, Abraham, and he rec- uh, suggested an alliance. In verse 22, Abraham professed that God is with you in all that you, or Abraham heard that God is with you in all that you do, and Uh, Abimelech said that God is always with him, and he asked for an alliance. And why did he do this? Why did Abimelech uh, approach Abraham? And this is because Abraham gave great blessing to Abraham, and wherever he went, he gave him great victory and listened to Abraham's prayers. At the age of 100, Abraham had his son Isaac. This is an unbelievable thing, and God, in God's power, it was able to be done. So he saw that 
God was always with Abraham, and in fear, he approached Abraham, and we should be a friends, and he asked for alliance. And us too, what this means is that we should also be saints who God is always with us, and when we become like that, the world will be fearful of us. Whenever we go out in the world, we shouldn't be we shouldn't be in fear because if God is with us, the world would approach us first and they will bless us and they will like promise for us and they will fear us. Likewise, Abraham at this time, when he heard this uh, suggestion of alliance, the first thing that he did, he told Ab Abimelech that Abimelech's servants stole the wealth that was like life to Abraham. And he rebuked that moment when uh, the servants of Abimelech stole the well from Abraham. And Abimelech said he didn't know about this. So Abraham, about that well, he told them that they should never touch his well again. And they gave the word of caution to them. And this is in verse 25. So Abraham and Abimelech finally makes their um, covenant. If you look at the verse 28 to 30 in today's reading, Abraham, when he was forming the, the covenant, he put seven ewe lambs, and it says, you shall take these seven ewe lambs from my hand so that it may be witness to me that I dug this well. And the word, the number seven refers to like the perfect. It's a perfect number. So Abimelech, he has to recognize that this is Abraham's, the well is Abraham's, and he shouldn't touch this well. And that was part of the covenant. And likewise, Abimelech accepted this uh, offer, and they made their covenant. So what kind of redemptive meaning does this event have? And if you look at Abraham, he was a sojourner. And this sojourner made a covenant with the king of a country, and officially... Beersheba became Abraham's own, and that was the proclamation of that. And God promised Canaan to Abraham, and it was a symbol that Canaan is now his, Abraham's. The fact that Abraham owned the well in Beersheba is a act of faith that he did in zeal that he will possess the land of Canaan that God promised him. And Abraham wasn't just looking at Canaan thinking, oh, when is he going to give this to me? But whenever this opportunity approached him, Abraham took that opportunity and he was acting first and that he will you know, take possession of this land. And that's what, he's, that's what he did today. And likewise, how he um, made this covenant and afterwards, he called this place Beersheba. In Genesis 21:31, therefore he called that place Beersheba because the two of them took an oath. And this is in Genesis 21:31. Here, the word "called" in Hebrew is "kara." It means to officially proclaim or declare. So this Beersheba that is in Canaan, Abraham officially took possession of it. And Abraham and his descendants became the owner of this land of Canaan. And that was the, the declaration of faith. Secondly, what did, he, what did he do? Abraham planted the tamarisk tree at Beersheba. It's a tamarisk tree. And this tamarisk tree um, Abraham was thankful that God let him form this uh, covenant with Abimelech and in thanksgiving he planted this uh, tamarisk tree. And what kind of tree is this tamarisk tree? First, tamarisk tree is a tree that has a very deep root. And this tamarisk tree is very sturdy and very strong. So for the tall trees, that goes as tall as 30 feet. And what's more impressive is that when you look at its roots, 
the roots goes as far as 100 feet down underground. So even in the arid desert, when there's no water, it can have like a very deep root. So it can prevent itself from drying and it can still be alive. And it's a tree that has a very long life. And this means that the covenant that was formed in Beersheba will not be broken at any affliction or difficulties and it will continue. And it represents the eternal characteristic of the covenant. Secondly, Tamar's tree is a tree with thin leaves. Tamar's tree leaves are very thin. And the ones that are tall are about as tall as 30 feet. But because their leaves are thin, there's less evaporation of moisture. And that is why the tree doesn't dry and is able to grow strongly. If you look at Mark 11, Jesus cursed a fig tree. It had nice large leaves, but there was no fruit that Jesus was able to eat. And when he was looking at the fruitless tree, he cursed it. And this means that our life should have a lot of fruit, and we should become trees that are full of fruit. And this tree shouldn't dry, and as the tree grows strongly, we should become saints who are like that tree that is fruitful. And the leaves of the tamarisk tree is thin, and it doesn't evaporate the moisture that it absorbed. Likewise, we have all the word that the God gives us and the grace that God gives us. And as we are absorbing this moisture, we shouldn't lose this moisture, but we should save this um, blessing and grace so that we can become larger trees and we can grow as a larger uh, tree. And that is what the Tamar's tree is teaching us today. And the fact that Abraham planted a Tamar's tree is an official symbol that he owns this uh, Beersheba. Abraham believed that starting from Beersheba, he will ha have possession of the entire Ca land of Canaan. And in faith, he made a mark. So for example, if you have like some sort of uh, snack or something, you know, people sometimes put it in their pocket or they put their spit on it so they say this is mine. And just likewise, Abraham showed that Beersheba is mine by putting that tree. So this uh, Tamar's tree became a guide for his descendants and also a guarantee that Beersheba is Abraham's. And likewise today, just like Abraham, we should trust in all the promises that the Lord gave us just like Abraham and plant the Tamar's tree. And true faith does not stop just by faith, but is transformed into action. When we go, want to go to this uh, company, if you just say it and we, if you don't study for it, then we can't enter the, the company. You have to put in that much effort. Abraham wasn't just looking at the promise of God, but as he was looking at the the promise of God, he was also putting in his effort. And that is what the scripture today is telling us. And thirdly, what did Abraham do? Abraham called the everlasting God at Beersheba. If you look at verse 33 of today's text, Abraham planted a tamarisk tree at Beersheba, and there he called on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. The eternal God, the everlasting God, he called upon his name. Here, the word for call is the same as what we mentioned earlier, is kara, to declare or to proclaim. And aside from that, it also has a meaning to worship by calling the name. So when he planted the tamarisk tree and called upon the Lord's name, what does that mean? First, he it means that he served the Lord through his worship. And if you look at Abraham's life, Abraham lived a life of worship. The purpose of his life was 
and the value of his life was worship. Wherever he went, he pl uh, put up a tent for the Lord, and he dug up a well for the Lord. And everything that he did was calling upon the Lord, name of the Lord, and he was living a life of worship. And today, we should also live a life of worship just like that. Just like how Abraham called upon the name of the Lord, whenever we study or we work at work or we do uh, chores at home, whatever that we do, it should be a life of worship. And Abraham planted this uh, tamarisk tree that has a very long life. And this was because his descendants should multiply and their, also their descendants will continue to worship the Lord. And it was in the heart of prayer that they should continue to praise the Lord. And secondly, this was a confession of faith in the everlasting God who would promise the well to his descendants. Abraham believed that this everlasting God will give this land, not to a just Abraham, but to his descendants as well. And that is why he planted this tamarisk tree that has a very long life, and he was uh, praying. And Abraham wasn't just looking at his own generation, but he was also looking in the future on his children and also the Messiah who is to come. So he was able to see that far, and he was um, having his act of faith, looking that far. If you look at John eight fifty six, it says, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it, and he was glad. It says, Abraham, it says, my day, which is the Jesus' time. He saw the redemptive work of Jesus, and he saw it, and he was glad. Abraham couldn't live forever in this earth, but the tamarisk tree that he planted will live a long time, and just like how it is there for a long time, the message that he gave, that he received, and the covenant that he received should not be discontinued, but will be delivered throughout the generation to come, and he was asking God to take command of that. And today, We should look at not just our generation, but for the generations to come after us. And as we look forward to those generations, and we should be saints who serve the Lord, looking at those futures to come. And in conclusion, we must all plant spiritual tamarisk tree through faith, and we should put in that work. And Abraham made this covenant with Abimelech and planted tamarisk tree and called upon the name of the everlasting God. And this was a faith of the living person. And because he had a faith of a living person, he was able to live this life of faith and life of worship. And in the future that is to come, even the things that was not fulfilled yet, he had a strong belief that it will it'll be fulfilled and he planted the tamarisk tree. In the Bible, it says, if you plant your, uh, if you plant your seeds, you will be fruitful. But in real life, if we plant like a tree or fruit tree or something, sometimes they fruit and sometimes they don't. And I planted um, uh, cucumbers, tomatoes, and things in my garden. And I saw that the cucumbers were able to grow, but the tomato only had one tomato. And the sesame leaves, they just died. And they say it's easy to grow it, but it was they were all dead. But the fruit that the Bible is promising us is that you are to reap if you plant your seeds. So those who plant less will reap less, and those who plant many will plant, reap many. So we should really work hard to plant. And what's important here is not just the act of planting, but what are we planting? What are we planting? In Galatians 6, 8, For the ones who sow for his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption, but the ones who sow, from the, sow to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. 
So Abraham, when he was um, planting tamarisk tree, what did he reap? He reaped eternal life. He didn't look for the fleshly prophet, but he looked forward to the promise of God, and he glorified the Lord in his life, and that was Abraham's life. And that is why he was able to receive the eternal life. It was a great blessing. And us too, we should put in the labor of planting the tamarisk tree of faith, or the spiritual tamarisk tree. Beersheba represents today's church. Beersheba is church. This is because Beersheba, if you look at the history, it is a place where Abraham worshipped the Lord and his descendants worshipped the Lord here. And also it is a place where there is a well, a well of uh, promise. And well is where the living water comes from. And that means that where the word of God comes from is church and it is Beersheba. If you look at John 4, 13 through 14, Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give, give him shall never thirst, but the water that I will give him will become in him a well of water springing up, from, up to the eternal life. So the word of God is a uh, living water, and where this word is proclaimed is Beersheba. And this church that we are worshiping the Lord today is a spiritual Beersheba. Then, at this Beersheba, what are we planting? What is it that we have to plant here? And there are many things that could be a tamarisk tree to us. There is the tree of faith, tree of prayer, tree of praises. And we worship the Lord with the praises. And the band team, they practice. And even if it's difficult, they came in front of the Lord and they worship the Lord and they volunteered in front of the Lord. And this is all an act of planting a tamarisk tree. And worshiping and service is all a tamarisk tree. And also cleaning the sanctuary. Or if something is wrong, you know, you pay attention and you fix those. All these acts are the act of planting a tamarisk tree. Also, our children and the children to come our tamarisk tree and all the young people here we are all tamarisk tree and it's the future of the church and as a parent we want to um, raise our children in faith so that we can relay our faith to them and also as a student students who go to school we should always study for the glory of God and that is a act of planting of Tamarisk tree. And for the people who are working at uh, businesses or something, you shouldn't just work to become rich, but by working hard at the company and glorifying the Lord by that, that is also planting the Tamarisk tree. Likewise, we all have many different kinds of Tamarisk tree that we should look forward to our future and we should plant those Tamarisk trees. When we look at Abraham, he didn't just look at himself. Of course, Abraham, at, this, at his time, he became really rich and he received a lot of like, great blessing. But this blessing did not stop at his time. But just like the uh, Tamarisk tree, it was continued throughout his descendants. And it also continued to the generation today, where the promise of God was continued all the way today. And today, this promise and the blessing was given to us from Abraham's faith. And this is in uh, Galatians uh, 3, 9, 29. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's descendants, heir according to promise. And when Abraham planted the Tamarisk tree, looking through the future and invested, he made this foundation of faith where we are standing today, and we are able to receive these blessings. And furthermore, we should all work really hard for, the, for this church and serve the church and not do the things that we want to do in the world, but we should think how we can glorify the Lord and how we can repay the Lord and how we can give thanksgiving to the Lord. And we should think about these things and we should become the foundation of faith. So today, how much Tamarisk tree are we planting today? How much are we investing? And how much are we praying? And how much are we looking forward to that day, the 
last day and looking forward to the, the kingdom of heaven. And what I hope is that today, through the message today, we, as we plant this tamarisk tree in spirit and faith, let it root really deeply and bloom beautiful flowers and finally receive the blessing of transfiguration and eternal life. So that just like Abraham, as we plant this tamarisk tree in faith, let us be fruitful in the fruit of faith. And I pray this blessing upon all of us in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Our God, full of love and grace, we thank you. On this blessed Sunday, you allowed us to come to this sanctuary and let us worship you in faith and receive this blessed uh, message. Just like the message you gave us today, let our life be a life that always look forward to the eternal world and act in faith. And let us plant the Tamaris tree and let us always worship you and pray for you and let us have a faith of living, living being. And also, let us become the Tamaris tree with deep roots. And let us not lose our faith and always serve the word of God so that we become fruitful and as we are drinking the living water that you gave us, let us become a more rich tree. And especially, you gave us this blessed uh, message, and at, we raised us in this evergreen church, which is Be uh, spiritual Beersheba. At this place, let us plant the tamarisk tree, and as we are growing, Let us also be able to deliver this message to the generations to come and let this message not stop and continue to be delivered so that your will is fulfilled and your redemptive history is fulfilled. And at this time, in faith and in thanksgiving, we are giving you this offering. Remember all the hands that are giving and bless them so that it can glorify you at all times. And also to us, you gave us great blessing. And we pray that you will fulfill all these prayers. And we give thanks, thanks and we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.